In this video, let's solve a problem involving reinforced concrete design. Now we have a 4 meter cantilever beam, 300 mm wide, with a total depth of 570 mm and an effective depth of 500 mm. And it supports a factored uniform live load of 55 kN per m. Let's write that. This is the live load, which is 55 kN per meter. Now this is already factored, so we don't have to multiply this by 1.6. Next, Fc prime equals 21 MPa and Fy equals 275 MPa. The unit weight of concrete is 23.5 kN per meter cubed. Use phi equals 0.75 for shear and then determine the factored shear force or VU at the critical section of the beam. Now this load is still our live load. We have another load which is our dead load. Now to compute for the dead load, we need this one. Let's draw the cross section of the beam. The beam is 300 mm wide, this one. And then the total depth is 570 meters. Now this is 570 meters. Now for cantilever beams, the reinforcing bars are placed at the top because the elastic curve of this beam will look like this. And so the top will be in tension and the bottom will be in compression. And since concrete is weak in tension, we need to add reinforcing bars at the top so that this will help the beam resist tension. Now sir, what is the effective depth? The effective depth is this distance that's measured from the center of the bar up to here. And so this will be 500 mm. And so let's compute for the dead load. Let's color this one purple. Now the dead load is equal to the unit weight of concrete multiplied by the cross-sectional area. And so that will be 23.5 kn per m cubed times 0.3 meters for this one and then multiplied by 570 mm or 0.57 meters and so this will be 4.0185 kilonewton per meter because m times m is m squared so isa na lang yung m na matitira dito and so this will be our dl however this still is not factored and so let's multiply this by 1.2 because our ultimate load is equal to 1.2 dl plus 1.6 ll now again we are not multiplying this by 1.6 because this is already the factored uniform live load and so our wu will become 1.2 times 4.0185 plus 55 and so this will be 59.8222 and so let's change this one into one load. Now this combined load is equal to 59.8222 kN per meter. Now the choices for this problem are the following. Ito yung actual choices. Now sir, how can we get this one? The concept here is that VU occurs at a distance D from the support. Now this is our support and this is our distance D. And so let's get the shear at this point at a distance D from the support. Again, our D is 500 millimeters. And so let's convert that to M. It will become 0.5 meters. And so let's make a cut here and then let's solve for the shear at this point. Now our cantilever beam will have an upward reaction here. And this is equal to 59.8222 times 4. Let's label this as A and this one as B. And so our AY will become 59.8222 times 4. And so that will be 239.2888. Next, we have to solve for the resultant of this one because we will subtract that from AY in order to get the shear at this point. Now the shear at this point, let's label that as VU or the factored shear force. And so that will be 239.2888 minus the resultant of this portion. Now this resultant is equal to 59.8222 times this distance which is 0.5 meters. And so this will be 29.9111. And so let's subtract that here. And so our VU will become 239.2888 minus 29.9111. And so that will give us a value of 209.4. Which means that this will be our answer. Now sir, why are we not using this factor? That's because this is already our ultimate shear. Now you will only use this one if what you have is the nominal shear or Vn. Because again, Vu is equal to phi Vn. Now, what if you were careless and then you solved for Vn instead of Vu? This is what will happen. Our Vu is this value or 209.4. And then let's equate that to phi Vn. Let's type phi which is this one. And then let's try to solve for Vn. Press shift solve. The answer will be 279.2 which is in the choices and so that's why you have to equip yourself with the concept because there are a lot of times that some of the given will not be used in the calculation and so this will be our answer. You will only use the factor if what you have is the nominal shear. If you already have VU and you are looking for VU, you don't need to do extra steps. 